check this out. We've got something really fun today. This is so amazing. Math and math. Oh man, again? Let's warm up by simplifying these expressions. The first one, let's first factor sine x out of the denominator. And we get 1 over cos x uh, plus 1. Now we probably want to make the numerator look like the denominator, so I could factor out a 1 over cos, but maybe it's just easier to multiply numerator and denominator by cos x. Now don't actually multiply it in to this binomial on top here, but do multiply it into the one in the denominator here. So that becomes 1 plus cos x in the numerator times cos x in the denominator sine x, and this is 1 plus cos x. And now these two will cancel, and we're just left with cos over sine. And we could leave it as cos over sine, or maybe cotan x would be nice. Let's do the next one. Just involves numbers here, but often students make mistakes with something like this. First, let's deal with the denominator here. We need a common denominator if we want to add these two fractions. So 3 over 4 is fine, but let's multiply this by 4 and 2's denominator by 4. And 2's denominator by default is 1. So this would be 8 over 4. Now we can add those two fractions in the denominator, and we get 11 over 4. And now we could take the numerator and the denominator and multiply by 4. That will get rid of this triple layer fraction here. And we're just left with 4 over 11. Now, if you did this a different way, that's fine. Uh, this is just one way to do it. The last one, we get a plus b in the numerator. Now, each of these terms in the denominator has a reciprocal to it, so each of them must be reciprocated individually, not together. You can't put them together there. This is b reciprocal, and this is a reciprocal, and they're not together. There are no brackets with it outside, so that's what we need to do there. All right, now to get these together in the denominator, we need a common denominator between them. So multiply this one by a over a, and multiply this one by b over b. Now we've got a common denominator, and we can add these together. So in here we've got b plus a over a times b. Now this is our big fraction bar here, so I'm going to draw it a bit thicker. And this fraction is in our denominator. Now we see that we have a plus b and a plus b, and you can get rid of that next, or if that's awkward, deal with this a, b in the denominator so we don't have a triple layer fraction here first. So I'm going to get rid of these first. I'm going to divide numerator and denominator by a plus b and get rid of it. I'm careful with that step because that means that we get a 1 over 1 over a, b. Now, since I'm dividing by a fraction, I can multiply by the reciprocal, which just leaves me with a, b. 7.3, solving exponential functions without logs. Now, I know lots of students are very excited to get into logarithms, and some already know how to use them, but we do want this skill because it's very quick, and if the equation is easy to do without logs, why introduce them and make it more complicated than it needs to be? Let's see how this will work. If I have 2 to the power of x equals 4, x is stuck in the exponent. Now, normally we wouldn't have it there, so we could do the square root or cubed root to cancel out that exponent, but now it's stuck up there. So there's really no algebra that we can do to get it out of there. But 
there is something we can notice here, and this is, there's a base of 2 here, and this is 4, and 2 is actually uh, a factor of 4. Not just a factor, but we can rewrite two, 4 as 2 squared. Now once we have the bases the same, then what do we do? Drop the base and set the exponents equal. This one also has 2 to the power of x on this side and 8 can be written with the same base. 8 is 2 to the power of 3. So I'll just replace 8 with 2 to the power of 3 and then keep the same exponent there. Now on this side we just have 2 to the power of x still and this side. When we have an exponent and another exponent up here, we multiply those. So I'm going to do that. 3x minus 3. Now I've got the same base. The exponents must be equal. So I'm going to drop the base and set the exponents equal and solve. So minus x on both sides plus 3 on both sides. I get 3 is equal to 2x. Divide by 2 on both sides I get x is equal to 3 over 2. Now the last question looks very complicated, but 8 and 16 can both be written with base of 2, so let's do that. First, 8 we already saw is 2 to the power of 3. Leave this exponent here, so this is still 2 thirds. 16 can be 2 to the power of 4. Now, it's got an exponent of 3, and we don't want this radical here because that really will mess up things. We want everything in exponential form so we can add them and subtract them as we need. So remember that the index of the radical is the denominator of the exponent. And then on this side, just 2 to the power of x. Let's multiply these exponents together. So on this one, we have 2 to the power of 2. And this one, we have 2 to the power of 6. And then these have their own bases, so we could add the exponents in this case. So 2 to the power of 8 equals 2 to the power of x. Now we drop the bases because they're the same, and we get x is equal to 8. Now, make sure that you go all the way to where we only have one base on each side. So we couldn't have dropped the base here in this step because there's two bases over here and there's only one over here, and that wouldn't work. If the bases can be made the same, and it's a big if, then exponential equations can be solved without the need for logarithms. And don't forget, you can check your answer with a graphing calculator, graph this side in y1, graph this side in y2, and see where they intersect. These ones? Looks like we can solve these without logarithms. So, well, this side is fine, 2 to the power of 4x. And this side, 4 is 2 to the power of 2. Then multiply these exponents here, 2 to the power of 4x and 2 to the power of 2x plus 6. We've got one base on each side and they are the same, so we can drop them. 4x is equal to 2x plus 6. Minus 2 on both sides, 2x on both sides, we get 2x equals 6. And divide by 2 on both sides, we get x is equal to 3. Next one, we've got 9 and 27. So it looks like we should probably use the base of 3, because 3 squared is 9. But this isn't the only way to do it. You could um, give this a base of 9 with a fractional exponent, so that's always possible too. I find it easier though to go to the lowest number. Okay, 27 is 3 to the power of 3, and we've got x minus 1, and this would be 3, 8x, and this is 3, 3x minus 3. We can now have the same base, we can get rid of it. 8x is equal to 3x minus 3, Minus 3 on both sides, we get 5x is equal to negative 3. Divide by 5 on both sides, x is equal to negative 3. 
over 5. Let's do this one a different way, just so you can see what I'm talking about. On this side, 9 to the power of 4x is what we're going to leave it at. We're going to try to make 27 have a base of 9. So if we had 9 and we took the square root of it, that would give us 3. And then if we cubed 3, we'd get 27. So 27 is actually could be written 9 to the power of 3 over 2. So that's possible. Then we can multiply these in here. So we got 9 to the power of 4x equals 9 to the power of 3 over 2x minus 3 over 2. Now we can drop the base because they're the same. So we get 4x is equal to 3 over 2x minus 3 over 2. Now, unfortunately, doing it this way, we've got some fractions here. So we've got 4x and minus 1.5x's here is 2.5x. Uh, now we can multiply both sides by 2. And then we end up with the same answer, 5x equals negative 3. So divide by 5 on both sides, and we get x is equal to negative 3 over 5. The nuclear power plant in Chernobyl had a meltdown, and now Chernobyl and all the surrounding area is contaminated with cesium-137, which was supposed to have a half-life of about 30 years. Theoretically, when will there be 1 16th of the cesium-137 left? Let's set up a half-life equation. Our amount at time t is equal to our initial amount. 1 half is our base because we're doing a half-life equation t is up here and we divide that by the half-life. Now the amount we want to find is 1 16th and that's if we started off with an initial amount of 1. Now t is what we're looking for and the half-life should have been 30 years. Looks like we can write this using the same base. So let's do that. We get it up here. We have 1 over 2 to the power of 4 is equal to 1 over 2 to the power of t over 30. Now we've got the same base. We can drop that base and just set our exponents equal. And it looks like t is 120. So we should have got 1 16th of the, of the original amount left after 120 years. When will there be only 0.001% of the cesium-137 left at Chernobyl? This will be when the site is completely normalized. So this amount is what we find regularly elsewhere. So we'd be looking for 0.001% that would mean that we started off with 100%. And then we are still looking for t here. Now I'll divide by each side by 100 because then I can get this base by itself. So divide by 100, divide by 100. On this side here, if I simplify this, I get 1 over 100,000. And on this side, 1 over 2 to the power of t over 30. Now, we cannot write this as this, with the same base as this. So we've got to use a calculator. And we get that the time is 498 years to normalize. Interestingly enough, it appears that the ecological half-life of cesium-137 around Chernobyl is 180 to 320 years. That means when they actually went out and tested the soil and water, they found that it was a lot longer than what they found in a laboratory for half-life. So let's recalculate using 200 years, which is about um, a, a low estimate here. Uh, when will the site return to normal? So we've got 0 0.001, and so equals this part. And the only change we're making is putting in a more realistic half-life of 200 years. 
And then same deal, this actually can't be written using the same base either. And so we just have to solve this one using our calculator. And we get that the time is 3,322 years. And then it's all okay. Chernobyl will be perfectly normal. This was part of Relations and Functions 10, Solving Problems that Involve Exponential Equations. Here are some questions. Try them out. See if you know what you're doing.